Awesome, awesome. Happy New Year's, everybody. I'm back in my office. We're going to hope that my internet holds up down here. So we'll see. I have been in my dining room for a smooth minute, but I am back in my, <laughs> in my space. Welcome everyone to the High Performance, a High New Calls, the first one of the year. And I'm really excited um, to have you on. I am Josh Johnson, Work Life Integration Strategist. And um, I'm excited for this new year, like super, super stoked if anyone ever uses that phrase again, or I may have just dated myself. But um, but yeah, I'm so excited. Um, there'll be some new things that are coming out this year that um, will be the first time that I'm rolling some like stuff out, um, like product based. So excited about that. And I will be sharing a little bit more as I have like more narrowed down my date. Um, so I want to make sure that you know that the Excuse Me While I Live Intentionally program is up and running, and um, I would love to talk to anyone who is interested in learning more about that program. So I invite you to send me a message um, or go to um, my website, jicejohnson.com, um, and find out more about that program there. And also, if you need a reason to go to Miami, there is the Mimosas and Manifestations brunch happening on February 18th. So very excited about all of those things that are coming up. This is my first time taking a brunch on the road. So we're going to, um, I'm expecting, I'm expecting the best. I've been starting to talk to some folks out in Miami and getting pretty excited about it. So that is all of that for today. This is the High Performance at High Noon Call. It happens every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, and 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I'm going to start jumping right in because I want to talk about goals versus systems. This is, I feel like this is super appropriate because, of course, we're at the top of the year and typically people either running in with new goals, right, or they have recommitted themselves to goals that have maybe fallen off. Or you have some who are like, I'm not doing no more goals, right? Like I ain't doing nothing. And some of that I ain't doing no goals is because we have broken trust with ourselves. But I hope that we can restore trust in ourselves with ourselves, um, you know, as we like start to rebuild what this looks like, because every year, every month, every day, you have a new opportunity to just get up and like recommit to something that you may have fallen off. But here's the thing, when you fall off over and over and over and over again, that can be wildly discouraging, right? I've been there. So um, today, my email subject line was wrong, but I sent out an email last night <laughs> that was talking about um that was actually just talking about like some of the recommitments I've had to make with my own like workouts and my health and things of that sort, right? So you can be discouraged when you fall off over and over again. I definitely have been there myself, um, even when, you know, it looks like, or on the outside, it seems like someone is crushing it because I get that, you know, oh girl, you're doing so great. Like there's a lot that happens in the back that it just is what it is, right? And what you learn is you learn how to put your best face forward and you keep moving um, towards your goals, right? Which is something that I feel like I've, I've, that's the thing that I feel like I've mastered. Whatever's happening on in the background, you may never know because I'm about to just put it together and put my best face forward out there. But um, one of the things that is wildly important in meeting those goals is the habits that are underlying. And I want to start with this quote um, because I want to see everyone that wants to be successful, be successful this year. So I want to start with this quote from James Clear. James Clear is an author who wrote The Atomic Habits, um, a phenomenal book. I absolutely recommend reading that book. But he says, you do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems right? And we're, we're going to use systems and habits interchangeably here. They are different. There's, there's, there's a difference, but throughout today, I'm going to use those interchangeably, right? So you do not rise to the level of your goals. Um, instead, you actually fall to the level of your systems. And why is that so wildly important, right? So the, I'm going to just, I'm pulling 100% from James Clear. James Clear uses an example when he talks about this. Like, let's say if you're an, uh, um, an athlete, Olympian uh, um, athlete, right? Everyone goes 
to the Olympics wanting to win the gold medal. That is the goal. The goal is I want to win the gold medal. However, in that space, what you may find is that you might not reach your goal. But what have you done to develop yourself to be literally a world-class athlete is how you got to the Olympics in the first place. And so you can far outpace and outreach so many other people in your field. You can become essentially the GOAT, even if you don't have that gold medal, right? Because of the work that you put in and the habits that you put in. So what will happen is, is that world-class athlete may or may not ever reach gold medal status, but they will far out, out exceed the thousands of other athletes that are in their field or in the, the sport that they play, right? And so how does that work in between when you actually reach your goals, right? And what that feels like if you don't, like is an Olympic, is an Olympic athlete a failure because they didn't get the gold medal? Is that what they are in their athletic career? Are they a failure or are they still at the top of their career? And sometimes when you set your goals so tightly on a thing, like I haven't achieved or accomplished anything if I don't have that gold medal, like my goal isn't accomplished. And so therefore I really am struggling to see myself as being worthy or see myself as being successful or see myself, um, you know, as an expert in this space, right? Because I don't have that gold medal or would you, you know, like, would you train with someone who got the bronze medal? Like, would you still train with them? If you were trying to build, you know, your athletic ability, right? So we have, we often keep our eyes on the prize and that prize gives you the direction that you're headed in. Your systems and your habits are what create the ability for you to get there. So one of the times that I remember being most successful is when I was in the military in terms of building my habits. This was like why I excelled in the military really quickly. Um, I had all these systems in place. I literally had systems in place for my uniform, right? Like if you are familiar at all with the military, um, not everywhere in the military, but if you're in garrison, meaning you're not at war, for the most part, they come to work with their, um, well, let me not say that because the Marine Corps ain't like that. The army comes to work with their uniform pressed, right? Shoes, boots rather shined, right? Like this is like standard, right? So I have to come to work looking a certain kind of way. I had to build a system in order for my uniform to be pressed every day and my boots to be shined every day. Whereas people would get written up because they came to work without that. That means they didn't have a system in place. Never in my entire military career, I did four years active, four years in the guard. Never in my entire military career have I ever been written up for my uniform because I had a system in place to make sure my uniform was always crisp and how it was supposed to be in order for me to show up to work as my best self. Then I had other things in place. Like I used to cook all my meals on Sunday. Sunday night, I'm a football fan, 49ers. Um, who's going to the playoffs. Super excited about that. I saw your face. That's okay. I saw your face, Broncos fan. Uh, <laughs> not the Broncos. <laughs> I'm diehard 49ers over here. Um, I used to sit down, down on Sunday and I would do a couple of things. Like I would get all my stuff prepped for the week and I would cook all my meals because when I got off of work, I would go for a secondary workout. Then I would have school. And what would happen is if I didn't have my meals prepped, then I would either eat out. I would waste money on stuff that I wasn't trying to waste. I would not be eating the way that I wanted to eat or something else would fall behind. Even my schoolwork would fall behind at that time. I was going for my bachelor's degree. So like my schoolwork would fall behind or my workouts would fall behind. And even though in the military, you do your morning workout, I used to do an evening workout as well. Um, I was very consistent about that. And so, and then there were goals that I was trying to hit, right? So for example, in the army, you can run an A, B, C, or D class. I was running in B class, but my goal was to run an A class, which means I needed to run faster and longer. This is why I was training in the evening. So I set up certain systems in place in order to maximize my time, but also because after I've worked all day, after I've done my schoolwork, after I've worked out, I'm just tired, okay? I'm ready to sit down. And so I don't want to be in the kitchen cooking. I don't want to be what fuss, fuss. Uh, fiddling around and fussing with my uniform and trying to do all the things that kept me um, moving forward. So at that time, I wanted to sit down and watch TV. 
I want to literally just sit down and be able to watch TV and hang out and play with my dog. And so that's what I did. So I was able to enjoy a good part of my life because I was able to put these systems in place and I reaped the benefits of those systems because I was able to then get promoted quickly um, through the ranks in the military. So it was the same way. I mean, I can come up with uh, example after example of times in my life that I've been very strict about routine, very strict about the systems that I've had in place and seeing how those systems have helped me reach my goals. And then other times in my life where all my systems fell apart, like when life was for real life in and I had become um, a mom in particular with three babies, like in early on, right? Like momming with one was one thing. Momming with three, it's hard, especially with the gaps of ages. I'm over here trying to do preschool stuff and trying to do middle school stuff at the same time. And not necessarily like I'm a single mom, right? So not always having a lot of help in the home. Like I, it was very difficult for me to try to pull systems together when my sleep was inconsistent or my work schedule was inconsistent. And that's one of the things that we can often do as entrepreneurs is we do have the ability to create whatever, um, you know, whatever schedule we want to create. But what you find is that while entrepreneurs have that freedom of time, most successful entrepreneurs actually don't utilize that freedom of time. Instead, they enforce a discipline of time in order for them to create the systems that help them stay on top in their field, right? So the, the, the selling point of entrepreneurship is I get to do what I want when I want. And there is some truth to that. But if you don't create a discipline of time or you don't create the systems, then you actually don't because you don't make any money. So you got to, you know create some, what those systems looks like, right? And so I, I can find, like I said, a numerous amount of times where those systems have been in place and have helped me. Um, even for example, when I was in multi-level marketing, so I'd done Primerica for a while. I was a, a licensed real estate agent. Um, I had been working on my series six and 63. Um, that 63 is a bitch. I passed the six, but that 63 didn't work out for me very well. Um, but because there were systems in place even in the multi-level marketing space, for me, I was able to grow really, really well. And so in Primerica, before you can actually open up your own office, which is, um, which is uh, I can't remember what they're called right now, but I grew to the point of a regional leader. The only thing that stopped me from opening up my own insurance office was that I didn't pass my 63. So um, I had gotten all the way up. I had a team built under me and I did those things successfully because there was a system in place. They taught me the system and I actually followed the system. Then when I started my own company, like I started um, a website and design company and I didn't put no systems in place. And so we made some revenue, we made some money, but what would happen is, is that we would be struggling to keep up with client work or we'd be on top of client work, but now we don't have new clients coming in because the system is you create a funnel from, you know, awareness to lead generation, to sales, to, um, you know, to implementing that project and then getting your client out the door. And hopefully, at least in the website space, then you create maintenance. Well, because we didn't have that system or that funnel going, we could do well in one space, but then the other space was falling apart. Or we'd go out and go get a whole bunch of clients, but now we got all this client, these clients and we haven't set up the system to actually move them through the process of getting their work done. Now we have disgruntled clients because the disgruntled clients is like, I didn't pay my deposit, where's my work? So when you're missing one part of that system, right, it doesn't function as a system. And then that's where you start to see gaps and you don't meet your goals as effectively as someone who is able to take someone from, uh, you know, awareness all the way through to maintenance. So um, I want to talk about the space that every goal that you set actually needs to have a system or a habit undergirding that thing in order for you to reach it. So when you set a goal, whatever that goal is, I have a savings goal, I have a weight goal, I have a goal to um, uh, spend more time with family, spend more time with my kids, I have a goal to travel, I have a goal to whatever goal it is, I have a goal to build a business, I have a goal to leave my nine to five, whatever goal it is that you have has to be undergirded with a system or a habit in order to reach it. That needs to be something that is repeatable, right? And so we're not, I'm not going to dig too deep into like what creates a system or what creates a habit because that could be 
one course or that could be a whole like semester of courses like there's a there is it's it's not that it's complicated it's that it takes time to put in place to tweak it to do it right to not give up to be consistent in it to fall off the wagon once or twice and to pick yourself back up and keep going right like all of those things go into creating repeatable systems and habits but the goal is, I mean, the 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 uh, thing that you need to be mindful of is, is it repeating? If it's not something that you can repeat over and over and over again in the same way and fashion that you do, then it is not a system or it is not a habit. And those are the things that need to undergird whatever it is that you set your goal on. The other thing that uh, happens in this space is it allows you or forces you to focus in on the present right? So oftentimes when we're thinking about a goal, that goal is way far off here, right? So I want to say $50,000. That goal is over there. So what I have to worry about today in my repeatable system or my repeatable habit that helps me move closer to that goal is what is my savings goal for today, right? What is that maybe automatic withdrawal from my checking account to my savings account or, you know, from my checking account to my investment account that is happening? How do I set up that system to make sure that I am making incremental repeatable steps focused here and now on the present that will help me then get to that goal that I have? Because the $50,000 savings goal isn't going to happen overnight. That's why it's a goal way off there right? So it allows you to take what you want to see out there and really reel it back in and create what is the actionable step for you to do today that you can also then repeat for tomorrow. That's important. You can do it today, but you can also repeat it for tomorrow or whatever increment of incremental of time piece that you set in order for you to do that work, right? Now, I want to break a myth. There is no 21 days to make a habit. I hope that myth has been successfully broken, but I still run into people who say it from time to time. So I just want to break that myth right now. There's not a 21 day, like it's not like I'm going to do this for three weeks and that habit is formed. But here's what is accurate, is that if you break a habit more than three times, you are likely to fall completely off. So you are what you want to go to the gym. You got a street going. You've been going five days a week for the last 90 days. But all of a sudden, you done went on vacation and you didn't go one day. Cool. You can typically jump back on the board, jump back on that bandwagon and you will keep riding it out and you're good. But you didn't go two days. Now you're testing it. You didn't go three days and that habit is about to be broken for you and you are going to struggle to get back on the wagon and get yourself back into the habit of going to the gym every day and building back up that, that consistency. That momentum that you have can really be a force to keep you moving. But once you break that momentum, you have to rebuild the momentum. So think about if you're trying to push like a boulder, right? And like it's hard and you're pushing and you're pushing and you got to push through because that's what happens if you're not like, if you're not a gym rat, it's hard to get up and go to the gym. Like when I was in the military, that was easy. I loved it. Like I love to run. I had people who I was, you know, working out with. I, I wouldn't have never considered myself a gym rat, but like I was in that lifestyle. Once leaving that lifestyle, I can, listen, I don't, I don't want to go actually. And it's not that I don't enjoy myself when I'm there. It's just, I could be thinking of a million other things that I would like to do. And what I would like is for my almost 40 year old body to just kind of go back to when it was almost 20 and just work that way. Right. But it doesn't. So I have to force myself <laughs> to go to the gym. Right. So when I got to do that, it's just, it's just not easy. And so when, so you've got to do that push, you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing, you are forcing yourself, you're exercising your ability to be disciplined and you get that boulder going and now it's rolling. When you stop that shit, you got to spend a whole lot more time trying to push it and get it back going again, right? So you can't break that momentum, but you do need to let any, if you ever have the idea that 21 days created a habit, just let that one go, right? But you can stop a habit within three days. That part is backed by science. So before I open up into some Q&A, I want to just give you a couple of quick things. One tip is I want you to be intentional about starting small and building. If you go back and you take a look at your life, if you go back and you take a look at your goals, right? And here's what I'm telling you. Every goal needs to be undergirded by a system or a habit. So if you got 20 goals laid out 
and you're thinking about all the systems and habits that you got to build in order to get all 20 of them goals done, that can be daunting. It can be difficult to start. You may feel discouraged. The good news is, is that you don't have to have all of those goals happen immediately. So think about how you can start to build momentum, right, by starting small and then continuing to build on that. And so it helps to identify those. Let me get that into the homework piece. But it starts to help by identifying what some of those habits are. And what you may find is that some of them flow into sync with each other or some of them may build on each other. So for me, healthy eating, like I eat the healthiest when I'm working out consistently. If I stop going to the gym, my eating goes down. I don't have to necessarily create two separate systems for those because my gym time is tied to my intermittent fasting time. It's tied to what I'm able to eat. And those things all kind of undergird themselves with the habit of like how I do my food, how I do my meal prep and how I schedule my gym time. And I have those all built out into a system. And so they can all work together. So you can tie multiple goals in with a system or a habit, but start by doing something small. So when I started by doing something small, I first started by going to the gym consistently. Then I added on the habit of intermittent fasting and I undergirded that with an app so that it would remind me of the times that I needed to be fasting, right? Then I was able to um, pick up my gym membership. Then I scheduled that I was going to the gym all whichever ways. Then I scheduled my gym time in alignment with the time that I pick up my children because now I'm already out the house, right? And anytime that I'm not out the house, I know ahead of schedule because I can't just leave my kids at school, right? So I have to sign them up for after school care if I'm going to leave them after school, which means I have preemptively known that I will not be picking them up and I can adjust my gym time. But because I have to pick up my children at the same time every day, I'm already out the house, I'm already on the go, and I've aligned it so that I can pick them up and head straight to the gym on my way home. Because if I make it home, I'm not gonna get up. I ain't going to get up. I was going to tell y'all, I will sit down and not get back up, right? And so then with my meal prep time already be already happening, when I get home from the gym, I have a small amount of time that I have to eat and my meals are already cooked. So then I pull it out, eat, and boom. When any one of those pieces fall off the off, out the system, the whole system is gone. Something doesn't happen. Either I'm not at the gym, I'm not eating right, I'm eating late, one of those things happen. So the goal is to keep all those pieces together and it's undergirded by that system in order for me to get to the place where I lose weight. I've lost weight plenty of times. My issue has been the consistency with losing weight. So start small and build. Then you have to affirm your identity. And this goes directly into how you see your values, right? Like who you are is in, is and how you operate. Those things are directly tied to and aligned with your values. Most of the time, we haven't actually identified what those values are. And so um, when you spend some time identifying those values, that helps you to shape who it is that you are. So if I identify with someone who has a healthy lifestyle, if I identify that way, that is also a thing that helps to undergird those systems, right? Because at some point, if you if your actions and your identity don't align, what something has to change. Like mentally, it doesn't work for you unless you can just like unless you're just a liar, right? It just doesn't work. So for example, I used to run. I used to run. I don't run anymore. Uh, I don't run often anymore, but I used to identify as a jogger. Like, yeah, I would put that in, you know, yeah, I'm a jogger. I use that word specifically because I could jog two to three miles and I would do that three, four times a week. At some point, as I stopped jogging, I would say, oh, I'm a jogger. But in the back of my mind, I'd be like, you ain't jogged in three months, right? And so like over time, I stopped identifying with, who that person was that I was saying that I am because that wasn't who I am. That's not who I am anymore. But then I started identifying as a person who has a healthy lifestyle. Those are two different things, right? So now I'm talking about maybe this way that I live versus the actual fact that I jog. When you create your identity, and that can be in anywhere. That could be, I'm an investor. 
I'm a saver. I, you know, I, I like I'm an investor now. When I started my investment process, I started calling myself an investor as I was working on making my first investment because I needed to identify with the concept of being an investor. Then I started setting up these systems in order for me to be an investor so they align. So with no problem, with very much ease, I can throw off the I'm an investor. No problem saying that because my identity as an investor aligns with my habits as an investor. And they don't always have to align immediately, but that identity shift is important because as you see yourself one way, you've got to be able to see yourself in the new space that you want to be. And you're going to have to work on seeing yourself in that space. And that's going to come through the things that you say and the things that you do, not one or the other. It comes through both. So the third thing is you want to design it so that you can win. You want to be intentional about that. You want to design it so that you can actually win. Um, it's really called the path of least resistance, which is kind of how most of the time we operate unless we're intentional about our aspects of discipline. So if you struggle with discipline, it is because you are often going the path of least resistance, right? Like it's easier just to go and sit on the couch. And that's why I do that. And that becomes a habit. But you can build in the path of least resistance into other aspects of your goals. So, for example, I mentioned I want to make an investment or I want to save $50,000 for the year. So I automatically set up my uh, a transfer from my checking to my savings. Now, if I was relying on me to remember to do this all the time, would I still see the same result or do I create the path of least resistance and I make sure that that transfer happens automatically? So you can automate things that you want to create and become habits, right? Because then I can still identify with that. My language and my, uh, my affirmation and my identity can still be aligned in that space. So you want to design it to win. You want to design a system that will help you get to where it is that you want to go, right? Sorry about my dog. Um, now, when you're thinking about the designing of that system, you also need to be considering two aspects of that. One is who you are with, as in who is in your circle, right? So if you are trying, if your goal is to save $50,000, right, and you are hanging out with folks who like to spend, 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 spend. Every time y'all go somewhere, they got to pull out their card. They got to buy something. Like I done been with friends before. They can't make it through anywhere. They need to just buy something. Like they about to stop at Auntie Anne's and just pick up something, some little pretzel. They go, they gonna swipe their card somewhere. They gonna pull out some cash somewhere. When you are, when your goal is to save and you're constantly around spenders, you're gonna struggle in meeting your goal. When you're trying to work out and you around people who like to lay on the couch, you're going to struggle. If you want to eat well and you're with people who like to go to the burger joint, you're going to struggle, right? And it's going to be like that across the board, which is how people who work in corporate America tend to hang out with people who work in corporate America, people who are entrepreneurs tend to hang out with entrepreneurs because that shift is different. If I'm hanging out with, if I'm hanging out with everybody who go to work nine to five, I don't go to work nine to five, I'm going to struggle in that space. Every time I'm ready to pick up the phone, they can't pick up the phone because they at work. We not go, we not gonna mesh as well, as easily. So entrepreneurs tend to hang out with entrepreneurs. Corporate American people tend to hang out with corporate American people. Laborers tend to hang out with laborers. Retail folks, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like people kind of hang out with who they're trying to be alike. And when they don't, that's when they run into problems. So as you're thinking about your systems, think about who you're hanging out with and are they helping your systems or are they not? And then the other space is to think about what's actually around you, right? Like physically around you. So who's around you and then what's around you in terms of how to design a system in order to make things easier for yourself. If every time you are trying to, like let's say if you're trying to, um, I'm gonna pull from James Clear again, he uses this example. If you are wanting to not watch so much TV, right? Maybe the goal isn't less TV. Maybe the goal is to read more, but you know that when you come home, you tend to sit down and watch TV. If you remove the TV out of your space, you're less likely to watch TV because in order for you to do that, you've got to go and pull the TV back out and put it back up. 
you can also take the batteries out of your remote control. You can also put the remote control in another room, in a closet or a, or a drawer or under a, a somewhere else, right? Like you can create obstacles to the things that you don't want to do and you create ease to the things that you do want to do. So that's controlling what's in your space in order to undergird the habits that are going to help you reach the goals. Everybody tracking with me? So I'm about to open it up for some Q&A. Uh, I'm going to remind you again, thank you to everyone else who has started to join the call. Um, so today we've been talking about goals versus systems and um, the replay will be available so you can catch what you've missed. I want to make sure that you know about Miami and about the Excuse Me While I Live Intentionally program. So if you are a high performance professional that wants to do more of what you love while still maintaining your high level of performance, then come and talk to me. I would love to give you more information about the Excuse Me While I Live Intentionally program. And I want to make sure that you know that the Mimosas and Manifestations branch will be taking place in my Miami, February 18th. So that is up and it's out. I would love if you would share if you have found any of this um, to be valuable or helpful for you to go ahead and help me continue to push the word out there. Um, and so that you can, um, you know, be, be helpful in that space for me. So your homework is, I want you to think of a goal that you have for this year, right? And we're starting um, small. If you're behind on your homework, we're going to talk about you being behind on your homework. We're going to get you there. Don't worry. I got you. I got you back. Um, <laughs> this homework is for, and this homework is a journal, right? So um, all my stuff is a journal, a journal entry. But I like to do journal entries because journaling helps you to flesh things out and think about it, right? In whichever way that you journal. Um, but I want you to think of a goal that you have for this year. And then now that you are thinking about it, right, what is the habit or the system that you need to put in place in order for you to reach that goal? So let's put that on the forefront of your mind and let's make it actionable. Here's the thing, right, because it's already, the start of the year has already happened. Most likely you have laid out some goal you anticipate or are hitting for the top of the year. So now what is the habit or the system that you need in order to reach that goal? That is your homework for for this week till next week. Okay, so I'm gonna open up for some Q&A. What questions do we have? What thoughts do we have? What comments do we have? Anybody, but not everybody at once. I'll go since um, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, great, I definitely resonated with the you don't rise to the level of your goals you uh, fall to the level of your systems because uh I think 2022 was definitely a, a a year of trying to figure out systems um particularly with uh you know real estate investing so we have like a call system we have a virtual system with calls for us and um all of these things that we're trying to kind of work out and I think you know the goals that we had as far as financial goals were falling to the level of our follow-up system because we didn't have a system in place to continually follow up with people. And so that's something that we're definitely working on um, just now for 2020. <laughs> so it'll be great. But um, And then also with starting small. So one, I want to know, so do you like meal prep or something? For me? Yes. yes. So I cook three meals at one time on Monday. It used to be Sunday, but now Sunday, I really do try to rest on Sunday. And to be honest, cooking is not, it's not restful, but I do. Um, when we get home on Mondays after the gym, I actually cook three meals at once. Um, and so after that, um, one, my kitchen is clean for the rest of the week. To uh, we pull out leftovers and it gives for me my it gives my kids variety so it's not like we have to have this meal on this day or this is like Monday's meal too it's just I cook three large you know large enough meals that get us through Monday night through Friday um, my two little ones they go with their father on Fridays so I kind of have the weekend off and then I'm back to cooking my three meals on Monday every Monday okay okay cool cool so I do have a little bit of a system with starting small and kind of getting a little bit bigger. So like this week, you know, it's just waking up one time and okay. intermittent fasting. <laughs> and <go>. so, <laughs> so then next week, um, I'm going to wake up one time and work out <laughs> okay. and then, um, you know, intermittent fast and start tracking my macronutrients. So, uh, 
protein. So I am trying to do a little bit healthier, but I'm not really caring too much about exactly what I'm eating as long as I'm getting the window right. And so um, then in about three weeks or four weeks, I'm going to try 75 hard because that's just two workouts and reading 10 pages a day on top of whatever it is I'm already doing. So I think I can add in another workout after a little bit of time. So that's my goal to kind of go slow. Because you okay. know me, I've used, I've used setting these goals that just... <laughs> so here's my challenge. Going. My challenge yeah. to you is to take the word try out. This is what you're going to do. Now, if you, if you fall off the wagon, right? Or you don't hit that goal, right? Then you adjust. But if you're trying, that means mentally you haven't made the decision that this is what you're going to do. So decide that this is what you're going to do, right? So that you can cut off all other options and then address it. And, you know, if it doesn't happen the way that you want to address it then, but make a full scale decision. I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do this. Because mentally you're going to be still switching back and forth. Three weeks is going to come and you're not quite sure if you're going to maybe kind of, eh, let me do it next week. Like, uh-uh, uh-uh. decide mm -hmm. what you're going to do and then do that. And if that doesn't happen the way you envisioned it, adjust and make a decision about what you're going to do going forward. Does that make sense? For sure, for sure. Can I challenge you with that? <laughs> Definitely. All uh, right. And that was it. <laughs> Perfect. Who else? Thank you again so much, Jice, for um, sharing this. But one thing that comes to mind for me is when you have multiple goals that seem like really, really high priority, um, how do we go about picking one or prioritizing? Yeah, you just have to prioritize them. Like, so the, I'm going to come back to the space of decisions, right? So you have to make a decision because they can't all happen at once. And they can feel high priority, but then that might have to be you walking down through the step of what is actually the priority, right? Um, yep, Toy just dropped. If everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority, right? So like, I know that that sounds super simplistic, but it is a process of literally making a decision that I'm going to prioritize this over this. This may need a pin in it. And sometimes you can walk through the process of like thinking about, um, can I delegate this to somebody else? Maybe it has to get done. Do I have to be the one to do it? Maybe it's something that you have had as a quote unquote priority for a while. So then you can actually really do some deep work and ask, is it truly a priority, right? Um, is it something that I want to do or is it a priority? But when it comes to making a decision, it is as simple as making the decision and then being able to make adjustments as you go down the line. So let's say you, you know, I'm just making up, you got five alphabet and you put them in priority and now you have A, B, C, D, E, right? If for whatever reason, as you're actually prioritizing those things, you see that something has switched up, make an executive decision to switch up the priority. If you're constantly switching up the priorities, then something in your system isn't working right. Like either you have too much on your plate, you don't have the right help in place in order to help you with what's on your plate. You haven't made an actual determination about what is important or what's not important or what can you phase, what needs to happen in Q1 versus what needs to happen in Q3, right? So you can begin to phase things out like this is important, but in order for me to give it my best effort, I'm going to need to move it from here to here. And then who needs to know that I've moved this priority? Who needs to know I put a pin in it so that they can make, they can adjust their resources or expectations or whatever you have on that in that space for them. But if all the things feel like they're a priority, that means that you haven't spent enough time doing some deep work to identify what is the actual priority and then putting them in that space and making a firm decision so that you can move in that way. And then you can assess and make a pivot if necessary. Does that help? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Who else? Roxy, you said that you have that book. Yes. So I highly recommend Atomic Habits. If I didn't already say that, highly recommend Atomic Habits. It's a fabulous book. Um, and hence why I'm referencing James Clear so much, but it's a really great, it's a re really great book and will help you in this space as you think about the type of habits that you need to develop. 
All right, one last call. If there are any other questions or comments, thoughts. Awesome. Well, I really hope that you all found this um, helpful. And um, again, like I said, what would help me is if you would share it out. But the replay of this will be on, um, will be up on YouTube. I will share out that link. I actually feel like I said that before and someone called me on it and said I didn't share it out. So that's my bad. So I made a note to share it out. And I will actually share out um, the link so that you can reach the replays. And it includes all the replays from last year. Um, I'm super excited and looking forward to a fabulous year helping all of you reach your goals, helping you hold me accountable to reaching mine. And I will look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at noon.